everyone and welcome back to Age Perfect Beauty. If you're over 40 and are getting married this year or going to be in a bridal party and you really want to look good in person and you want to also look good on camera, then you're not going to want to miss this episode. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating a full face makeup application. I'm going to be sharing some tips that professional makeup artists use to ensure that you get good longevity with your makeup and that you look fabulous on camera at all times. Over the years, I've worked with literally hundreds of brides, and I can tell you, no matter what their age, the one thing that brides have in common is that they want to look like themselves, but the best version of themselves. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's begin. If you choose to do your own bridal makeup, let's say you have not found the best possible makeup artist or you're in an area that perhaps you can't find a good makeup artist or maybe you're at a destination and there's just no one in, around to, to be able to do this for you and you want to do it yourself, you want to make sure that you layer products lightly underneath your skin. Depending on the climate, if you happen to be in a very hot climate, this is even more important. But in general, this is how you get good longevity out of your foundations. It's not always about adding primers and adding this and adding that. It's more about making sure that your skin has been prepped properly, which mine has. I did a light serum. I did a very good moisturizer. I'm making sure that the foundation that I use is more of a satin natural finish because that's going to give me longevity compared to those buzzwords that you see on foundations that are like um, dewy and moisture filled. And those are great for every day. But if you're looking for something that's going to look good for a long period of time, going to need minimal touch-ups. You're going to want a satin natural type finish, especially on a more mature skin. So I'm going to be starting with the MAC Prep and Prime. This is just a setting spray. I'm going to add it first to my skin. And you just want to give that a minute just to get into the skin. I'm using the Marc Jacobs uh, Shameless Foundation and it's in color R250. And this is, it's a beautiful foundation. It's got that nice, light, natural finish that I'm looking for. And just before my setting spray dries, so it's just a little bit dewy on the skin, I'm gonna add my foundation on now. I'm gonna use a brush to apply it because I wanna buff it in. I wanna take my time and buff this in properly into the skin. I just recently did a video, a five minute fast makeup video. Now, that's good for every day, but when it comes to doing a bridal makeup, you need to take your time, layer your products, buff them into the skin really well. All of this will give you that longevity that you're looking for, and it also looks better on camera. And that's what you're looking for. The reason why you wanna go with a natural satin finish is that it's not too drying on the skin. If you go with something that's matte. What happens is it gives a flat finish to the skin, which is fine if you're 25 and you have oily skin, but it's really not good when you get a little bit older. Now, you may want to let that sit, this foundation sit for a minute, go back in and cover up extra areas, but it's all light layers, taking your time, making sure you blend that in and buff that into the skin really, really well. All the little nooks and crannies. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in with my uh, Maybelline Rewind. You know I love this one. And I'm just gonna go into those areas where I think I need just a little bit more coverage. For me, it's always around the nose area. A little bit on the cheeks. Got some discoloration on the cheeks as well. Just a little bit, but I want to cover it up. I actually have more discoloration and sun damage on my body than I do my face, which is probably not much better, but I don't suffer too much right now with dark, dark uh, patches on my face from the sun. But my hands, my arms, they suffer. I guess I was a lot more diligent at putting my SPF on in my face than I was on my body, especially when I was younger. Okay, and you notice how I'm just doing thin layers here. I'm building up the product. I'm going to go in with a MAC concealer. It's a prolonged concealer. I don't want to add very much right now because I will probably go in at the very end and just freshen up what I need to. I'm going to keep this product 
I don't want to go right underneath the eye because I don't want, if I happen to have any close-ups, close-up pictures, which can happen on your wedding day, I don't want to have too many um, lines and marks. As the day goes on, that can happen with concealer. So I just try to concentrate on getting that right on that dark area. For me, this dark area is in this area, like right in that tear duct area as well. So adding your foundation and your concealer and giving it a couple of minutes to settle in is exactly what you want to do. So your everyday type makeup, you know, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't last past eight hours a lot of times. I mean, most of us want it to last longer, but it's really not devastating to us if it doesn't last, you know, longer than eight hours in most cases. But when it comes to bridal makeup, the most important thing is that you look as good at eight o'clock in the morning as you do at 10 o'clock at night with minimal amount of touch-ups. I mean, you need to touch up because the skin will want that. But what you don't want to do is have to be constantly reapplying makeup, reapplying makeup. You want to be having fun during the day and just not have to worry that you're not looking fabulous all the time. So I don't tend to, just my skin in general, does not tend to need powder. I'm not a big person on setting powder. If I do do any kind of powder, it's usually if I'm using a more moisture fill type uh, foundation and I'll just powder in the T-zone. If you find that you have uh, oilier type skin or that you suffer with excessive oil in certain areas, then just do a light dusting of powder. I wouldn't go, I would never get carried away with a powder on more mature skin, but what I would do is suggest that you get some clean and clear uh, blotting papers or whatever your favorite blotting papers are and just use those as the day goes on. It will make a little bit of difference to the makeup integrity, but the, it's better than piling on tons and tons and tons of powder because again if you happen to have a up close five hours an up close you know picture taken of you five hours after you put your makeup on it can look not so good if you've put on a lot of powder so now i'm going to go in and prime my eyes we're going to move on to the eyes now i'm just using an eye primer from inglot um, they're all pretty much the same you're going to want to spend the time on getting your primer on i don't add a whole lot We've gone over this in other videos as well. Um, primers are, eye primers are a, a necessary product to use if you're gonna use powder, foundation, powder eyeshadows, which we're gonna be doing. Okay, now I'm gonna be using this beautiful palette from Tarte. It's a Tartlet in Bloom palette and it's really, really pretty. And I'm gonna be using not a lot of colors and I'm gonna be keeping this quite light and fresh because in general, I like my makeup to be more on the light side anyways, but I wanna kick it up about 20% because I wanna look good in pictures, but I still wanna look fresh and myself uh, in, in front of other people. I wanna look good at my reception as well and not feel like I'm caked with too much makeup. So I'm gonna start with uh, adding the Flower Child color, this one. I obviously use this one a lot, I like it. It's like a very light, creamy color. I'm gonna add this all over the eyelid. Let me just bring this in so that you can see a little bit better. And I'm just putting that all over the lid all the way up until underneath my brow bone. I'm going to use that as my highlighter as well. I'm sticking with matte shadows today. I'm going to be doing um, a daytime bridal look because you know, if your matte shadows are just ideal when it comes to this kind of thing, they photograph well, they don't give flashback on camera. Sometimes the good particles in um, some of the eyeshadows, like uh, for instance, one of these kind of eyeshadows, they're pretty, but they can, in certain daylight, if your picture's being taken, give a little bit of a flashback. Photographers hate them, especially a lot of glitter. They probably won't tell you that because you're, you're the paying customer, but I can tell you from experience that photographers are like, please don't use glitter eyeshadow. Don't use glitter on the face. It just does not photograph well. And you're paying a lot of money for your photography. So I'm giving you a little bit of a tip there. I'm just gonna go in and blend out my eyeshadow here. Now I'm gonna take 
just a little blending brush that I've got here from um, MAC and I'm going to go in with this color called Sweetheart. It's a really pretty pinky color. This particular dress that I'm wearing today I wore to my niece. My niece got married last August. Hi Lauren. And it was a beautiful wedding day and I got this dress and I loved it and my mom got a beautiful sparkly pantsuit as well and we both wore our, our sparkles. I do like sparkles I have to say, just not on my face. And wouldn't you know we did everything you're supposed to do to try to get these sparkles off. We shook it outside, we used hairspray on it, we shook it again, we did hairspray on it. Oh my gosh, we still, I'm, I'm looking over here and I've got sparkles still coming off me. I think it's going to be the last sparkly outfit I buy. I've just gone in and just done a very light amount right on my crease and right in the corner here, outer corner of the eye. I'm going to go in and do the same thing on the other eye. We've talked about this before. I tend to keep my eyes open, especially this one because it's a different, this eye is a different size than this eye. And that's normal for a lot of us. I'm looking for just a wash of color here. Something soft and pretty. And then what I want to do is stand back and look to see. Where do I need to pick this up a little bit more? What do I want to add in just to give it a little bit more oomph? And I think what I'm going to do is go in with this Jet Setter color right here. And I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm just going to use the end of this flat brush and I'm just going to go along the bottom lash line just that little bit, like a quarter of the way out. I want just a hint of color on that lash line and then I'm just going to blend it all together. This is not hard. It's all a matter of just taking your time and you know what, if you're going to do your own wedding makeup or you're in a wedding party or you know, you're the mother of the bride, mother of the groom, take your time. Do not be rushed. Close the door to your bedroom or wherever you get your makeup on and just take the time that you need for yourself. I can tell you from experience that the wedding day is complete chaos. It doesn't really matter how much planning you do, 90% of the time people are banging on the door. Mom, where's this? Honey, where did you put that? Can you, you know, can you move your car? Because the flower guy is trying to get in. So just say, don't bother me. Close the door. Don't bug me for a half an hour, whatever it's going to take you to get this done so that you look and feel your best. So I'm just going to take my time here. Just blend that up and out. Now, when it comes to liner, I'm going to go in with an Urban Decay liner in the color Smoke. It's a really nice color. I'm going to go into my top waterline first. I'm not going to get carried away with the liner here. Right? That just adds that little bit of drama. Now I'm going to go in with that same little brush that we used before. I'm going to take off some of that color that was on there. And I'm going to use the same light sweetheart color that we used before this one that we used kind of in that crease area. I'm just going to drag that along my bottom lash line. I'm going to take a q-tip just blend it all out. Now I'm going to stand back take a look again where do I want to change this? What do I want to add? Well, I like just a little bit more drama on the eye, so I'm going to go back in with this little brush. I'm going to go back in with that Jet Setter color, and I'm just going to add a little bit more. Just deepen that color right on the lash line. And then bring it out into a little bit of a V, the outer edge of my eye. Eyelid. Eyelid. 
When you're using matte shadows, you need to make sure that you spend the time to blend them well because they're often the most pigmented of eyeshadows. If you blend them properly and get to them right away, they will last you for hours and hours. Now, just looking at that, I'm going to go back in and just lighten this area a little bit more. I'm just going to use a, this is an old little pointy brush of mine. It's been around forever. And I'm going to go in with Charmer, this more of a white color. And just in this area, right near the tear duct area, I'm just going to brighten it up just a wee bit. Okay, now I'm going to move on and I'm going to add uh, a highlighter, but it's going to be a bronzy highlighter. It's from RMS and it's called Master Mixer. I've shown this in another video in my highlighting videos, which I will link up here for you if you want to take a look at some of the products that makeup artists use for highlighting mature skin. Now I'm just going to take this. I want to add it at this point because I want to give it a minute to just sink into the skin before I move on to do, you know, my blush my highlighters after that. This is a nice highlighter. It doesn't give a lot of glitter, but it gives that little bit of warmth to the skin. Photographs really well and gives that kiss of color. If you're getting married in the summer and or really any time of year and you want that little kiss of color, this is, this is a lovely product. You'll notice I'm just putting it on that top of the cheekbone like I always do, staying away from any of my lines and wrinkles. I'm not sure if you can see what that does, but it just gives a nice little illumination to the skin. Now I'm going to move on to eyebrows. And you know I use my two products. I'm always trying out new products, but you know what? I always come back to these in the end. This is my L'Oreal uh, pencil, it's just a pencil. I add my uh, tail on here. like so. And then I go in with MAC Shade and Shape, I think it's called. It's called uh, Shape and Shade in Spiked. That's the color. And then I just paint on pretend little eyebrows here, just in the little areas where I need to have them fill down. And then I use the other end of my L'Oreal brow pencil that has a nice little perfect little brush on it. Okay, it does let's that. move on. Let's get on to curling our lashes. Give them a good curl. I'm using a Tweezerman curler. It's worth investing in a decent one, whatever one you like. I even think Revlon does a pretty good one. Um, you can pay a lot of money for them for sure. I'm going to go in and, tw you know, do my curling twice because my eyelashes can be a bit stubborn and I really want to open up this eye. You'll notice that I haven't added any eyeliner on the top of my lid. I want to keep this soft and I don't want any kind of issues with liner running on me. I'm going to go in with my mascara now, which is always a waterproof mascara. I'm using a L'Oreal. I'm using a black brown. I'm only doing this because this is the one that I had in, I have that's waterproof. Um, generally, I like using black mascara unless you're very, very fair. But this is a nice one. It's a brown, a black brown. Uh, so it's not quite as intense as a full on black mascara. So if this is your preference, this will work. But you do need mascara and you do need to take the time to apply your mascara properly. It's not something you can rush. If you happen to be really good with applying individual lashes, you need to practice first. And maybe I'll do a video on that at some point, show you how to do that. But if you are good at that, then by all means, apply them after you apply your mascara. Just in the areas where you think you want to add a little bit of fullness. I'll, add my, I'll keep on adding my mascara here. 
All right, so I've added mascara top and bottom, and I've added just a little bit more concealer. As I told you in the beginning, I wanted to just clean it up at the end, and that's what I've done. I've cleaned it up a little bit here. Now that RMS highlighter, creamy highlighter that we put on is, is sunk right into the skin now. Now I'm gonna go in with my blush, and I've chosen a blush from NARS called Bumpy Ride. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not got too many glitter particles. It photographs beautifully, and it's a perfect, if you have color skin color like mine, it's really a beautiful color for a bride, really. It's gorgeous, it's got that gorgeous flush color to it. So, go in with my blush. Just a nice soft sweep. I like to do that soft C direction, shape. I want to look like a just flushed youthful bride, even though I'm well into my 50s now. Just that nice soft C around. Okay, then I'm gonna go in just with my uh, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. I don't know, you guys must be getting sick and tired of watching me apply this powder, but it's my favorite. And it photographs like a dream. It makes the skin just look glit, lit from within. Now I'm going to take a buffing brush and just buff those. This is from Real Techniques. Not an expensive brush, but it's one of my favorites of theirs. I'm just gonna go in and buff all that together. Soften everything, I don't wanna have any starts and finishes. I've chosen not to do any contouring. I wanted to make this as simple as possible for you to do at home yourself. I'm gonna take the same brush, just go over lightly my lids just to make sure everything is soft, no harsh edges. Okay, now we can move on to our lipstick. I'm gonna start with a stain. Now, I'm not a big lip stain matte makeup wearer, but this one, I'm gonna show you how you can get longevity from your lip color without having to dig a, a, a lip pencil in and force it into your lips and then blot with your lipstick a million times. This is a fast, easy way to get a really pretty, wearable look that lasts for hours and hours. So the lip cream from Sephora, it's called um, Infinite Rose, has dried out. It's got mattified onto my lips. It's not gonna be moving now for many hours. And I'm gonna go in with just a buxom lipstick. This is the same one I used in my last video. It's called Rebel Rose, just a cream lipstick. And I'm just gonna add this on top. This combination together, I tested out yesterday. I wasn't eating, but I went about five, six hours. I was drinking water, I was having tea, and it lasted me really well for about six hours before I started seeing a little bit of break come down around this area, breaking up of the product, which, you know, you really can't ask for any more. So if you're looking for a good lip stain combination, this really works well using that Sephora lip stain and then using a, a nice cream lipstick on top of that. I think you get a really nice finish. And here's your final look. I added my sparkly earrings to go with my sparkly outfit. I also did one extra spray of my MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus just to give that, lock in that makeup. This makeup application should give you a good 10 to 12 hours of longevity, which is ideal if this is a, a long day, a long bridal day for you. Um, I also think the only thing that you need to be concerned about will be a little bit of shine, so make sure that you have blotting paper so that you can blot off any excess shine that you may have throughout the day. And five or five, six hours, you'll need to reapply, reapply your lips if you apply them the way that I've shown you in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you. Let us know below if you're getting married this year and if you've got any additional questions that you'd like to ask me, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and for subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time on Age Perfect Beauty.